You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. And welcome everyone to another episode of your dose of death podcast it is just myself lauren today but i am not alone um as you know this is the historic third episode we are putting out in a single week this is huge because there's so much wrestling going on so much death match wrestling going on this weekend to start off the month of march i am joined by someone who um, has become a new friend of mine someone who really has a great vision and someone who is celebrating two years with circle six um, a guy who, I mean, you've seen King of the Death, you've seen all these wild shows, we get to hear from the man himself, no other than my good friend, Mike Gavorgian. Mike, how are you doing, my friend? What's up, dude? It's good to be on with you. I'm doing good, man. I'm uh, stoked for this weekend, stoked for that we're still alive and kicking, <laughs> doing the thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was going to say, we wish that we had like a, a light tube laden birthday cake or something like that. It was like, bring it out for you guys with a... Happy two years of Circle yeah, Six. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll pop. Maybe we'll pull one together for the weekend and bring it out. <laughs> yeah, to I was gonna say, feel free to tag me in it. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, no, I'll, to I'll give. I'll credit you for that one if we do it. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, happy two years of Circle Six. You guys have really grown. I, me and him, we're talking kind of off air, and I think a big thing that has happened over the last few years is the growing fan base for you guys. I mean, you guys have been. Front, you were based out of LA, of course. Those shows in 1792. We've seen you guys really grow really over these last two years to doing a lot of stuff. I mean, King of the Death matches back, all this crazy stuff. But I want to go back to the very first year you guys started. I mean, there was always a bit like, oh, this stream, this and that. There's always gripes and criticisms. Yeah. What has what has it been meant to you? to see this growth over the last few years, especially since you, you really started promoting these shows now. Uh, I mean, listen, this is, uh, I'll start off by just kind of even, cause I never really acknowledged a lot of this, like the gripes from the first show from the stream and stuff, <laughs> like kind of the, the level of crazy that went on just that for that first thing to even happen. Uh, the original idea for the company was that everything was going to stream for free, that we were going to like either do Twitch or YouTube or wherever and like build that platform. And we had 7,000 viewers on that yeah, stream. That was a lot on, of people. I remember it was that. trending number one in the U.S. during the show. Uh, it got it, it wasn't even like the automatic uh, content ID for Twitch like that stream was like mass reported to be taken down. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, and then on top of that, we didn't have our production crew or anything in in house for that. Uh, I brought in people, a few camera people with random gear that didn't have any live uh, live broadcast experience, and I kind of was like rewiring everything myself as the show was going on, switching the broadcast myself as the show was going on, uh, and trying to maintain that. During the show, there was a power outage down the yes, street from a I transformer that, that blew up and took everything down after the stream had already been uh uh blocked so we literally just brought it up and i put it on restream and sent it to our facebook and everywhere else that i could at that exact moment to try to make it work and it to be honest it was incredible that we even pulled it off <laughs> with all the shit that went wrong it was our first time you know what, what do you expect it was that was shocked that it went as well as it did but as far as like where we've been able to go to from there uh I'm as almost a little bit as surprised as anybody we've lasted because we've had so many changes and we've gone through so many different transitions in the company. Uh, there's a lot of points that I wasn't happy with the way things were happening and we shifted gears and other people weren't happy with the way things were going and we shifted gears. But I'm actually like, I, I would say that after King of the death match and you can ask anybody in the locker room, cause I said this publicly that if it ended the next day after barroom blitz, I would walk away satisfied. I would be, I would actually be okay. Everything from here on is just like, it's, it's like saying I'm playing on the casino's money. Like, I think <laughs> I feel, I feel good, you know? 
Um, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, like, I remember like people are, and, um, from the seven tapings um, to just really like getting yourself. I mean, you really have like several different markets that you guys have now flourished to. I mean, yeah, LA is kind of home base, which of course we'll talk about the anniversary shows and the ballroom blitz coming up. But yep. like you have Houston now, which has become a surprising new market for deathmatch really kind of over the last year. But then Chicago as well, you've really grown into a venue that really didn't see that much wrestling for years in Reggie's. And I mean, mm -hmm. as a Chicago local, that's like the biggest thing ever because Reggie's is like the mecca of all these bands. And then of course our, our, our good friend, Marcus Crane, rest in peace worked there. So seeing wrestling back in the at Reggie's of all places is huge, but of course, I mean, you're still growing. And I think I want to kind of talk about the talent that you brought in because of course, Atticus Coger, one of the, the focal points. Of course, Bobby Beverly, your king of the death match winner. Of course, Matthew Justice, your current Circle Six world champion. I can go on and on, but I think the one that definitely caught everyone's attention, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, Drake Younger. This was yeah. a, definitely <laughs> a hot button issue, to say the least. And but a guy who, of course, was seeing other promotions came back to death match wrestling, and you guys made kind of to everyone's surprise, the move to bring him in. And I mean, what has it meant to you to have a guy like Drake Younger in your locker room now? Uh, man, he's been beyond expectation in his contribution, in his willingness to be a part of the team, in his willingness to work with anyone and everyone. And I, Drake was not a guy that I knew in the industry uh, prior to meeting him last year he was obviously he was in wwe by the time i started getting involved in wrestling and uh i'd only heard about him through other people no nothing bad nobody nobody really had anything bad to say about him they were always a positive guy good attitude great this this whatever right pandemic happens we hear all the crazy shit that yeah. is like coming out about him that he you know he gets let go and just like anybody else i would had my i had my preconceived notions on who he was but having the opportunities to get to sit down and talk with them, like I said before, it was kind of like a, it was eye opening experience because I I myself went into it thinking I don't think like this. This is not my mentality. I'm not going to get along with this guy. We'll be cordial. I hope everything's cool. But then it started with this conversation of like this passion for wrestling that we share, right? And then passion for deathmatch, and uh, then it turned into like a technical conversation on production and how you map out your shows and. Then it's as we started talking about our personal opinions and whatnot, and I even brought up, like, you know, I'm not a, necessarily a fan of this and this and whatever. Hold on, sorry, my dog's coming in the room. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We love a special guest. Yeah, yeah it's all right. We're going to get a special guest on this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it was nice to uh, it was nice to get to have that with him. And I he was at XPW, obviously, at the time. And there was yeah. nothing where, you know, I told him I go. Doors always open if you want to be here and it works out and we can make something happen. Obviously, he retired. When he did and he was injured, I hit him up and I was like, hey, um, I know, you know, you got kids coming. You got, you know, three already there, two more on the way. If there's anything we can help you out with, with our some merchandising, whatever, you know, we're here. I know we never worked together, but we're here to help, right? Absolutely. When he was, th when he was thinking about coming back, uh, we talked a bit and, uh, you know, he wanted he wanted to come come in with us and i kind of i expressed my concerns about the reception of things and kind of like yeah. the way his his persona although may not have been who he is in real life was kind of handled publicly on on camera and things that we would need to clear up and how we would need how things would need to be as a part of circle six and i said in this interview where they would knock out some three yes, accounts that, that uh it's it's on him, right? Like where I'm, I'm giving the opportunity. Circle six is giving the opportunity of this platform for him to like show the world who he is. And it's not, we don't expect people to accept it immediately, but what we can do is give him the opportunity in the right places to be around uh, a diverse locker room that can, he can leave a better legacy uh, you know, than what he was offered at the end, you know? Yeah, and absolutely. that's, that's been important to me and, and obviously he's at the top of his game still you know and he's putting on incredible matches but anybody who knows me will also say that like i don't give a shit how good of a wrestler you are 
if I think you're a piece of shit, I don't, I wouldn't want to work with you. Yeah. I mean, couldn't have said it better myself even. Um, and and, and really we've cool. also, we've, we've also kind of had a little bit of a track record of like bringing in people that, you know, have been, have gone through shit, you know, like yeah. there was, we were the first ones to book Zach Wentz. We got yes. heat when we brought in Brian Kendrick, we got heat when we brought in AJ, you know, like we even got heat fucking stupid heat when we brought in cross. Cause of some yeah. the bullshit that was happening with, and cross is an amazing human being. Like he is a, him and Scarlet were fantastic people with small heat. But it was still, yeah, like, was you know, it was, it was, it, but it's just, it's crazy that, you know, you got to judge the person, like, you got to talk to the person and like, know the person and, and make your decision and your judgment there, not just based off of the things you hear. And I think that's what we like to do as much as we can. And maybe we're not as vocal about backing that decision publicly, but I also don't feel like we owe anybody an explanation aside from just trust us as people, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, I think it's only as is, I mean, as we'll talk about with the two anniversary show, I mean, you're putting him in really big spots. I mean, it's with Drake, I should say, like it's it's really cool to see him back in the saddle, really doing some big stuff. I mean, put him in that main event in Detroit with Bobby Beverly, literally, in my opinion, one of the best death match wrestlers going right now, Bobby Beverly. Like it's it's a really diverse locker room, and it's only going to get better, as I say. So um so I want to talk though about this interesting relationship you you brought in. I mean, you've in the music industry because yes, wrestling fans are wrestling fans, but wrestling fans love music, and you've had some really interesting relationships with music and or music venues. I mean, you're out here having relationships with Not Fest. You, I mean, you managed to get into one of the biggest like in music venues in the country in Reggie's, like. Where did this whole idea of bringing in wrestling and music come together in a way? Um, it's kind of, well, my background is, is from the music industry and it was always in kind of like heavier alternative punk, hardcore stuff, metal, stuff like that. Mm. And that world has gone hand in hand. Just WWE at one point was just like a very metal centric like, yeah. company. Right. And even NXT in like the, you know, late 2010s and, you know, was like, we had code orange on there. Yeah. And all this shit. So it's, it's that, that audience crosses over kind of very naturally, you know, and the, a lot of these guys are wrestling fans and just on the relationship, the ease of building those relationships. It's, it's, everybody will look at these musicians and go they're rock stars or this or that. Right. But the unique thing about wrestling is, is that the, the musicians and even like actors and whatnot to a degree will like look at wrestlers, even they may not have the same amount of money or exposure or whatever, but if you're a fan of this wrestler, you still have this like superhero kind of vibe to you, you know, yeah. and they'll look at you in that same way. So when you give people an opportunity to give that, bring that crossover, they're a lot more open to, exploring it than they would be in any other type of like normal business relationship uh so with my background in music and even uh my partner jonathan through slingshot or like he's okay yeah been the one like doing organizing a lot of the barroom stuff and uh you know we had a relationship working with brody king and doing merch for god's yeah. hate and, okay uh, our designer richie does a lot of work for um other hardcore bands in the scene so it's kind of been a natural progression. And then when we started Circle Six, we didn't want to run VFWs or high school gyms or any of like the typical like venues you would see wrestling in. Yeah. We wanted to have the venue come with some level of like higher production capability to make that presentation better. And you have to go to music venues for those. So as we would go into these buildings, uh, we would have shows that would kind of route around these situations of other bands that are on tour and whatnot. People would stop in early if they're there a day early, stay a day later if they had an off day on the road and more bands became exposed to what was going on. Like 1720s, perfect example. You yes. know, like you get a venue like that, you have a built-in video wall, you got built-in lighting, sound and light, sound and audio or sound and lighting crew that's able to help, you know, with your cues for the event. Good internet is ready to go the capability to run good production. So all of that kind of plays into how we were able to grow as like, as a company plus into that music world and Reggie's, I mean, 
they had done wrestling in the past when Marcus was yes, there, but they our, our relationship with Marcus was kind of what got us into the building is when I talked to the buyer for the building, it was, you know, you know he knew we had mutual connections through music industry, through agents and labels. But then also uh, he asked me, uh, he met, or he mentioned that they run wrestling back there. And I go, yeah, my, my friend Marcus used to work there. And that relationship of having that was like, okay, we've heard about you. Marcus has talked about you before okay. in the past through people um, and uh, other people in his community vouched for us. And it was just like, okay, if there's a company that's going to come in and do it and wants it, this is, this is a good fit, you know? Yeah. I mean, and as someone who literally, by the time this comes out, literally it was not even just two weeks ago, you guys brought barroom blitz to Chicago for the first time, which as I told you off, record and i'll say it on here i was begging a promoter to bring a no ring show any no ring show whatsoever because i think chicago would be a great no ring wrestling city but you guys did it with bar and blitz and i i want to get to bar and blitz because i think it's like out of all like the no ring there's a lot there has become a bit more no ring like new fear city time bomb yeah all these ones but like you guys are i mean you're bringing in quality artists and you're yeah. putting on like good wrestling matches i mean like you brought it. Um, I'm trying to remember the lineup now. Like, I'm not the biggest like hardcore music person. Like, I respect the genre, but I had a hell of a time in Chicago. Yeah, it just, it's such a cool vibe to see these people. Like, some of most of the people there probably had never seen wrestling like that before. It was a 50 50 split, and I think almost every single barroom blitz we've done has been a 50 50 audience split, mm -hmm. which has allowed more people to become integrated into the wrestling community, even with the poor kids mansion shows, the backyard party. Yes, shows that we those are so cool. <clears throat> We'd have so a live band playing over there that are the one thing that I heard from everybody in that audience. The most was I didn't know wrestling could be like this because nobody's reaching out to this community. You think you are by branding a show a certain way or whatever, but like, you got to be ingrained in that community. Like Chris, RPW, Chris does a great job, but, but he comes from that background. Yes, you know, he, he comes from that music world. So those connections are authentic and they're natural. They're there. You're not, it doesn't feel forced. And it, it, anyone who comes from any kind of counterculture community or alternative community knows that uh, it's very easy to kind of smell out the inauthenticity in people, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, I get it. And that's why RPW gets that love that they do in that world. And I think that's why we get that love that we do in, in our world. Cause it is authentic yeah. from, from our end, you know? So I do want to ask about Barroom Blitz. Like where did the concept of Barroom Blitz first begin at? I want to get your point of view. <clears throat> so Jonathan was the one who came up with the name for it. I remember I was off on a trip. Uh, I stayed a couple days extra from after a show we did in some city. I can't remember. Maybe it was Cleveland. Okay. I flew back. And like two days later, I'd gotten back and uh, the logo was already done. And like the name was wow. done. He's like, we're going to do the, we're going to do the, uh, you know, no ring with uh, live music. And I was like, that's fucking great. All right, let's <laughs> figure it out where we're going to go. Cancer Christ, perfect for the two year anniversary show. Yes. He was, you know, they were on the first one. And the concept was also, it was always just a chaotic kind of in your face experience, you know, wrestling, wrestling shows are very regimented, right? Like entrance music, match, bell, exit music, pause, reset into the thing, right? Yeah. But live concert, you kind of have a little bit of the same thing too, right? You have your band performs, band ends, music plays in the venue, and then they reset the stage. Yeah. We try to like give this almost like kind of nonstop, like insane experience of there's always something going on. There's not too much downtime. If it is, it's bar time, but there's still like, it's a mix of every type of like sensory experience in one, you know? Well, I mean, that's awesome. I think I, I really like the idea. Cause I mean, yeah, like you're combining two things and you're putting them into this one chaotic animal in a way and it just it, it yeah. works it, it works out as the most chaotic but beautiful way in a in a sense so for sure um let's get into these anniversary shows that you have coming up as you said cancer christ is one of the bands i've heard of them they're like long time hardcore legends yeah they christ. just went on uh they just were on uh they did some tour dates with uh with gore recently okay they've been blowing up yeah yeah um so barroom blitz i mean looking at it, you have the lifers on there rob shit a guy who i've um enjoyed aj um i'm trying to see who else you got 
Who's this Buck Sky and Big Dick Hoss? I feel like I've heard of that. <laughs> Buck, right? Skinner, Buck Skinner, Buck Skinner, Big Dick Hoss. Buck, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, Buck's actually been um, doing some New Japan stuff in LA. Oh, okay. Recently as well, he trains out there. Um, it's both these guys. Uh, well, actually, Buck, not Big Dick Hoss. He wasn't able to make it, but Buck was on the Barroom Blitz TV show that we filmed yes. recently. That's going to get it in. Um, so they're like, I forgot about guys. the TV thing. I was gonna say, we had a yeah. dialogue. That's we such just a cool saw the experience. first, yeah, we just, just saw the first cuts from that without uh, any anything really like no effects, no nothing like being no color correction. But wow, it's gonna, it looks great, yeah. It's that's gonna, gonna be, be unique, really cool. Yeah, that's thing. gonna put no ring in a different light. And I think I, that's one thing that I like about you guys is you're not afraid to put yourself out there in these different situations. I mean, no yeah. ring wrestling's always been like, oh, some people like gripe about it, they're like, oh, it's too much, and I'm like. When you see Bar and Blitz and you see like the the chaotic the chaos from it, you're like, oh damn, I want to be a part of this. So I think it's yeah. really cool that we, all, we almost going. even refer to it as bar fights half the time. We don't even do <laughs> we don't even call it no rig wrestling. And um, I mean, of course you have Casanova on it, but also you have guys like former TV guys like Peter Avalon, which is really cool. Yep. So I mean, it's a good roster for Bar and Blitz, and I'm excited to see how that turns out. But let us get into this EIP, the two-year anniversary, the real, the the granddaddy of them all, as we'll say for this one. I mean, yeah. you have um, Lex from Three Teeth, as me and you talked about beforehand, the special one of the special guests. So again, that that love of music and wrestling coming together in a big way here. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, and Lex is like, like I told you kind of off camera. Lex is uh, is a dude that's always loved the wrestling business. He's a incredibly creative, passionate dude about everything he gets involved with. Uh, we've been trying to figure out a way to get him in with us, but tour scheduling and whatnot is just this never worked out. This was the first time that it kind of fit, and I called him. I was like, "Hey, we're doing our two year anniversary. Do you want to just?" be there and you know maybe introduce a few matches do dj and something just to be a part of the show we'll figure it out and, you know he's just jumped he was literally just jumped at it it's loved it so we're gonna try this i hope this is the start of a good relationship where we'll be able to do more together and maybe hopefully in the future incorporate three teeth into one of our weekends and okay you know get that get get them uh performing somewhere yeah and um of course special guest host zicky dice a guy who has hosted before uh, what's that relationship been like with Zeke Dice, a guy who another guy been on TV, a guy who's been around? Yeah. Like, what, what's that relationship been like with him? Because he seems to be loving. I love, I love Zicky. Uh, we had, uh, you know, me and him have had a good opportunity over the last two years to get close and get to know each other. And uh, we've built a good friendship, a good working relationship. Uh, he's a very creative, passionate dude, as you see, like the stuff, how hard he works, just even on his Twitch stream stuff. And he's always trying to innovate. And he has always got, a, you know, great ideas. I think he came into King of the Death matches like a, our ring announcer. Yeah, he did. It was, it was unexpected, an unexpected thing for people, which again, kind of, he killed it. Uh, just because you're a great wrestler doesn't mean you always have to wrestle. A lot of these guys have different, different traits. He's, that and he's a he's a larger than life personality too, so he fits that exactly. Role. Great voice, great look. You know, he he knows what he's doing. He's he's very personable. Great ring announcer. Uh, Cass, look, we put him in commentary. People fucking love yeah. that Cass combo, Cass KG combo. Uh, you know, we're just trying to we're trying to get as many people incorporated in unique situations and give opportunities where we can. You know, um, speaking of got being put in unique situations, the first like match we're going to talk about is the Cruel's Open Challenge. You don't see this everywhere. You see yeah. him, see him pop up in New Fear City. You see him in England. You see him everywhere. But an open challenge. I, I don't know who's got the balls to sell to that. I mean, to be honest it. with you. I don't know. Necessarily, I don't necessarily know either. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that talk shit in LA about how tough they are. So we brought in cruel. Let's see what happens. Let's see who's going to come out. Uh, I pray for whoever does come out, makes it out alive because that I, right? I was saying this on Twitter the other day or X, whatever you want to call it. Like there are not many people in this world that can take a gusset to the chest, like cruel and be like, yeah, I'm just going to no you. flinch. No, no flinch. flinch. He doesn't it's even move. Terrifying. Terrifying. He doesn't um, even move. Well, speaking up here, Avalon, we talked about earlier, but PP skid. Is it like a new tech? Is it PP no, shit or PP shit? PP shit. 
like shit. is this like a new like tag team that just started up is a, I, I no, so, so we curious. did we did back in 2022 we did uh i tagged peter and rob shit together uh because they were just peter avalon was doing pp ray with ray rose yeah i remember that um uh, and then uh I tagged the way we tagged those guys together and there's some good vignettes that we filmed. I got to find them and, and I'll send them to you uh, yeah, off okay. there. But, uh, but yeah, Pete was Rob shit. And P- pretty Peter Avalon PP shit is, uh, is the thing. So I wanted, they were obviously both off doing their own thing in different worlds. But when I talked to Rob, he's like, what do you want to do for the two year anniversary? I was like, I'm going to call Peter. The only thing I want to see is a PP shit reunion from you. <laughs> so well, um, that, that, I'm you're gonna to love it. it, and anybody that's attending the show needs to bring some dollar bills to stuff into their pants. Oh, jeez, <laughs> they're gonna Peter's gonna be grinding a lot, grinding around the ring with Rob. Oh all night, God, making money. Um, it's gonna but, be a real weird show. It is gonna be a real weird, weird show. I love it. Um, but the other legit match here. This is this is like I told you off camera. This is like the big what the f match. Of, of the weekend for me, but AJ Gray versus Bestia six six six. I've seen that like Bestia in Chicago. I've seen him do like lucha shows, but like I mean, AJ could literally like tear this dude's head off. He could if he could catch him. If he could catch him, that's the thing. And and Bestia's yeah. not afraid to get hardcore either. That's the thing. Yeah, that dude is. Not I think afraid. it's going to be a real interesting match. Is like kind of what I compared it to when we were talking off air about uh, King of the Death match and. Adam Priest being in the tournament, but then having that fucking crazy dog collar match with Oren. Yeah. Uh, people weren't expecting Adam to go the way he did. Uh, I think sometimes it's like those like weird matchups where you get real, real surprised with what, how good it could actually be. It could steal the show. You know, there's crazy matches on there, but that could remember when uh, uh, AJ and Mal, did you watch that? Yeah, one? I did. From the last 17, 20 show. I did. That match was insane. You know, it was. <laughs> Um, but next up, this is like one of the two big ones here. And of course, I'm talking about the Coger brothers versus Drake Younger and Dale Patrick's. I think Atticus has been having his eye on Drake for a little bit, and now he gets to have a little piece of Drake Younger. I feel like, I mean, that's a match I could you could put it in a freaking pipe dream. You wanted Atticus versus Drake for a while now. And I mean, we could go back to like no piece when Atticus called him out, and now it's somewhat happening here in a and then Dale's a guy who maybe is underutilized to some, but this is like you're putting Dale Patrick in a big, big spot here with Drake Younger. I, people. Yeah, I I'll speak on Dale real quick before anything else. Yeah. I don't think that there's anybody more deserving of getting an opportunity like that that has not ever had it, other than Dale. Okay. Uh, that dude kills himself on the daily when he's out you know um, he always goes hard i'm thinking about him and bev at bar room and i come up to you and i'm like dude they're both bleeding profusely and it's only match two of the night and i'm like yeah this is only match two come on now yeah so yeah. That, that was it was great when dale wrestled aj in indianapolis in february <laughs> yes. of last year mm-hmm. I, three days, four days after he had his appendix removed. Oh my God. I was like, I, I I, like this dude's on another level. He does does not give a fuck about anything. Uh, And he won't let anybody tell him no. Dale deserves every bit of success. So I, I want him to get that platform. I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, It's a hell of an opportunity. And, uh, as far as Atticus and, and Drake go, yeah, there was that that uh, uh, no peace, that moment. infamous Mike uh, moment. Yeah, I know. Listen, that night was I was in I was in Orlando that night. It was oh, uh, wow. It was, that, that whole situation was real fucking wild. Uh, Atticus and Drake uh, is a match I wanted to see. It's a match I know Atticus wanted. It's a match Drake definitely wanted because even when he was coming over with us, he sent me a list of uh, you know names that he wants. Uh, to be able to get in the ring with before he retires, and Atticus was on that. Uh, this is the first steps to teasing where we can get to with that. So I'm hoping uh, these guys have a fucking fantastic match, which yeah. I have no doubt that they will. And I mean, it's and, gonna, it's just going to see the Coger brothers back together too. I, I I can't get enough of that. 
Yeah, and I think Otis has really been able to shine this past year as well. Uh, you know, and I've become a big back fan. To- I've become a big fan of Otis over the last year. Yeah, Otis uh, pulled the curtain back a little bit. Like Otis wanted to be a part of this from inception, obviously because of Atticus too. You know, they're how mm-hmm. close they are. Otis and I were never. We didn't really know each other like that. I talked to him probably once or twice the entire time that I was in the business, aside from uh, until Circle Six started. And he brought, you know, he wanted to be on the show. He brought himself out to LA and asked for a match. We put him in with, with Bateman and he killed it and kept him a part yeah. of the crew and always wanted to find something for him. And I think he took that blunt force trauma concept and just like ran with it in a crazy way and <laughs> made it his own. And, uh, you know, he's really been shining. So it's, it's cool to get, be able to see him, uh, you know, grow with us and everywhere else over the last year and a half, two years. Yeah. He's, he has a big weekend coming up with the no world barbed wire the day before with heater. So I know <laughs> and I, I, I've already yeah. talked about that enough and I'm just nervous as hell for that one. So I don't need to say yeah, you, much would more be, you would be, you would be both. I hope I, I hope one of our main events doesn't <laughs> no, fall no, 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 we'll be fine. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm joking. I'm but, joking. The big match that was the main event of this show is Steel Cage Match. Is this the first time you guys have seen a Steel Cage Match? This is the first Steel Cage Match for the company, yeah. And um, uh, I yeah, it's maybe really a little cool. reckless with those four inside of it. So the Lifers, Matt Justice, of course, your Circle Six World Champion, and Bobby Beverly, your King of the Death Match Champion. So both guys at the top of the ladder of the company against the South Pacific Savages, Jacob Fatu and Journey Fatu. This, this is, yeah, this is just pure carnage in a freaking steel cage. It seemed oh, like Lord. the appropriate main event for the two year anniversary. Um, Journey Fatu was a guy who was in King of the Death too. Who like? Yeah. I mean, he took skiers in the butt. Like, like let's. I, 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 that is an image that lives rent free in my head, courtesy yeah. of Wrestling Unicorns, because he got like the best view of it. And I'm just seeing him like, does this dude just not feel pain whatsoever? I mean. He is Samoan, you know that. Yeah, of course. It's fucking crazy. But like, oh my lord! I mean, Jacob Fatu, though a guy who's not who's not a stranger to violence either. I mean, one of the most probably the one of the most unique independent wrestling talents out there in general. I've I get at least several DMs a day of people like, why is this not guy not signed anywhere? And I'm like, he's just loving what he does right now. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's dude, he is such a unique talent. It's kind of incredible the things he's able to do. Like you'll always he will shock you every time he goes out there. And his I mean journey's the same to to a level the same same way. Like you yeah. look at these guys and it's just like they're so different in the way that they work, but when you put them together, it's it, it flows so smoothly. You know, when those two are tagging together, they had an incredible match with Bobby and uh, and Eric in yes. Cleveland in our second show. I remember show. that. I remember that. That was wild. Uh, and uh, I I have a feeling that this could be like a match of the year type of crazy experience that's going to happen on Sunday. Yeah, and I mean, look, like Matt Justice is the guy who he feels rejuvenated. Matt Justice, like. Yeah, like maybe a little underutilized elsewhere, but then he comes to Circle Six, world champ, puts on great matches with guys like Atticus in Chicago. Uh, the no ring with Remington Roar, a good friend of mine, was great. The uh, it just Matt Justice looks like a new man in Circle. He feels Six. like he feels like a new man. I mean, obviously, him and I hadn't seen each other for a while, uh, and then when he was able to come back to when he was able to come back and work with us. Uh, seeing him be able to like freely create that house of doom match WrestleMania weekend in LA was like, was kind of the catalyst yeah. for it. Like that was, that was it. Like that's an idea that they, him and Bobby came up with wanted to do uh, Bobby presented it to me and we built it out exactly how they wanted it. And Matt coming in, I don't want to speak for him, but, but at the same time, I, I feel comfortable enough saying that like him coming in, and seeing the level of care that would be put into something that he he wanted to create, uh, I think it, it kind of allowed him to a degree to be able to think a little more freely and kind of go, okay, these are all ideas I'm thinking of, and I know that if I say it, it's going to be heard and and it can be it can be done, you know? Yeah, exactly. Which, is, which I think you know it's important. Like 
this is a creative industry. It's a, it's a business where passion carries you further than anything else. And you're, you, you have to love it. If you can't create freely, it's hard to love it. You know? Yeah. I mean, you hit it right on the head. You hit it right on the head. Um, what does EIP stand for? That's my last question on the show. Just, I'm, just, I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. Existence is punishment. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a good, well, even better in show name than just EIP. I was like, damn, but EIP. Yeah. Does we work. Didn't, we- yeah, we just called it EIP because I didn't want to type out existence as punishment a thousand times. <laughs> well, um, Mike, this has been an amazing conversation with you, and it definitely is interesting, especially because I want people to hear this and to understand your perception of where Circle Six is now, but where they're headed. Um, what maybe are some goals you have for the rest of the year with Circle Six? I mean, you're at the two-year anniversary mark. Like, I mean, yeah. there has to be more in the pipeline. I mean, what are, what are just some goal like general? There's a lot of goals. Um, so there's certain, there's things that are coming back this year. Uh, six, six of the six will be back again this year. Okay. We're going to be working towards that. Uh, King of the death match will be back in December. Uh, we're going to make an announcement on that shortly. Okay. Uh, that people will be surprised about and happy about, I think. So it'll be good. Um, really, uh, it's it's kind of hard because obviously like the typical answers are i want the company to grow i want us to make yeah, more money course. i want to have it be sustainable all of that but uh like the true goals i think for me and i think it's a little ev- we all everybody in the company kind of shares the same vision but we're also we all have our individual different goals for me it's really to be able to continue to make an impact with whatever we're doing whether uh it's financially for the talent that works for us or mentally physically for the talent that works for us you know we've talked about in the past like we i place a lot of importance on like physical health mental health uh of the people that are around us because it is such a taxing uh business on both your body and your mind uh it's done it to me you know and i i notice myself go through these these waves of it's good and it's great and then i'm down and it's fucked up and i'm not feeling good um and I see a lot of people I care about go through it. So uh, we just try to do as much as we can. Uh, if I, if we can end the year with everybody f- feeling good and move and progressing in their life, I, it would mean more to me than uh, the company being further ahead. I'm happy where we're at and the fan base that we're building. I don't want to overextend and try to do things that uh, are too risky. And I really just want to focus on, the team that we have and giving our people the best opportunity to live a good life. And I think that that's really it. And we want to actually like, I we're, I'm, we're trying to do um, some more like charity stuff and good. branch out and do different things of that nature. And really just, you know, use this. There isn't a lot of alternative lifestyle brands in that are this kind of out there that can reach an audience that wouldn't normally be able to communicate. Yeah, of course, you know, and I'd like to be able to like use our brand to be able to reach out to communities that wouldn't normally have a voice, you know? So that's, that's really the long-term goal. Yeah. Like feed, feed your, feed your soul as much as your pocket, you know? That's, that's awesome. I think that's a great place to stop. Cause I mean, again, you guys are still making things so unique. You, you're really putting yourself out there in different situations, as you've said many a times. And I mean, again, like it's just, it's really awesome to see you guys grow. And it, as I got happy two years, it's really, it's only going to, go up from here and um i mean you guys are really setting a different standard that maybe isn't seen enough i think that's really a good way yeah. to put it so yeah. um so like this, that, thank you um so to end this one i always like to let my guests plug anything they have when of course we've plugged the everlasting crap out of the anniversary show but um, yeah. is there anything else like where can people follow circle six where can people like keep up on things with circle six going on yeah, uh, Instagram circle six dot co, Twitter circle six uh, for X is circle six underscore co. Uh, all of our links are in the social media bio. If you Google us, YouTube, whatever. Uh, I know everybody complains about lack of content. There's going to be a lot of more, a lot more live streaming happening this year. Good. Uh, there's a lot of like the lack of releasing stuff has been semi intentional. Uh, it'll uh, everything will come out. Everything that people like are complaining about not seeing, it will all be there. Okay. Uh, it's just 
take some time. We also, I don't want to like put stuff out that doesn't look good. You know, that doesn't like, doesn't serve the purpose. You know, uh, we have, uh, you know, the experiences are for the live audience a lot of time and then everyone else will get, get everything, you know, yeah, but I, I we appreciate it. the support. Honestly, like the fact that people are frustrated about it shows that they care and it's not unheard. And, um, we weren't, we couldn't have believed that we'd be able to grow as much as we did in such a short time. And, you know, we love everybody that helps us for it. So, you know, in the end, it's just, you know, thank you for always supporting it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for making the time for me, Mike. And thank you for everything you've done and your contributions to professional wrestling and deathmatch wrestling are definitely there. And I mean, I'm excited to see what the future holds for you guys. So, and again, happy thank two you. years, happy two year anniversary. So, um, thank you guys for listening to this conversation with Mike G from Circle Six. And um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for supporting. And um, see you guys on the flip side. Thank you guys. This has been a Countout Podcast.